next section is directional terminology. We all know the standard anatomical position, right? Never ever forget that. So keeping that in mind, when you refer to two different parts on your body, we use this directional terminology. So you see a pair of words like superior, inferior, or anterior, posterior. So we are going to do them one at a time, but some of them refer to the same thing, so I'm going to combine them and we will talk about that. Okay. So the first set of words, if you are on page 2, under directional terminology, what do we have? Somebody help me here. Superior, inferior. Superior, inferior. That's straightforward, it's plain English, like, right above and below. But if you see another set of, another pair of words, the down fourth in the list, cranial caudal, right? Cranium, we know, the skull. Caudal means towards the bottom, towards the tail. We don't have a tight tail, maybe we have, who knows. But cranial caudal is the same as superior, inferior. So let's say, in the standard anatomical position, is my shoulder superior or inferior to the elbow? Superior, right. So let's use the other word, okay. Is my knee cranial or caudal to my hip? Caudal, okay. So you have to practice it in different ways, picking two points in your body, two reference points, and use both superior, inferior, cranial, caudal. So you have to practice, okay. Here are some examples in the book too. And the next set of words we need to know Anterior, posterior, that's straightforward, in the front and the back, right? But you have another pair of words similar to that, ventral, dorsal, same as anterior, posterior, okay? So if you take the heart and the vertebral column, these two structures, is the heart anterior or posterior to the vertebral column? Anterior, right. What about the vertebral column? Is it ventral or dorsal to the heart? Dorsal. It's in the back, right? It's a play of words, but we have to get comfortable with that. Then what do we have? Medial, lateral. Medial is different from middle. When you say middle, it's in the middle of three things, or two things, okay? But when you say medial, it's referring to the midline of the body. If the line passes through the exactly in the middle of the body, the midline, anything that's closer to the midline is medial, anything away is lateral. So your arms are lateral, your chest is medial. But if you take the heart surrounded by a pair of lungs, okay, so which would be more medial? Lung, lungs are lateral, Compared to the heart, the heart is medial, heart is in the middle, okay? So you need to know your body parts so to understand which one is much closer to the middle line away. So depending on what is being asked, okay? Medial, lateral. Then proximal, distal. In plain English, proximal is close, distal is far away, distant, far away, right? But here you have to look at the specific <coughs> the definition they use. So proximal distal refers to how far is it, is it close or far away from the point of origin. If you take your arm when you are in the fetal stage, your fetus grows the arm like this. From here it grows outward. Your leg grows out from the hip. Okay. So the point of origin on the arm is right here. So if you take the elbow, this is proximal to my shoulder my wrist will be distal to my shoulder. If you take the leg, my ankle will be distal, whereas my knee will be proximal. Everybody got that? The last pair of words, superficial deep. Again, simple. Something on the outside, superficial. Something more inside, deep. So if you look at the skin and the heart, which is deep? The heart. The heart is deeper to the skin compared to the skin. Skin is superficial to the heart, okay? So which one is more out on the outside, which one is more on the inside? So these are the different terms they use for 
directional terminology when you compare different parts of your body. And the next one, we have sectional terminology where we talk about body planes. So you can see figure three, the lady stand, standing in the standard anatomical position. Uh, you see the different color shaded squares that represents the different ways you can divide a body into three different planes. Okay. You can use the picture you have sketched on your notebook. You can put a line if you want. If you have a line passing through the midline, midline of the body, that's going to be called sagittal plane. Sagittal plane divides your body into equal right and left. <coughs> you see the word sagittal plane? It says mid-sagittal plane. There is a reason for that. Because if you have a body, okay, if you divide exactly in the middle, it's going to give you equal halves on the right and left. That will be called mid-sagittal plane. It's passing exactly in the middle. But if you divide a little bit on the side, it's going to give you two halves, but they are not going to be equal. You'll get two unequal halves. They are going to call this parasagittal plane. So mid-sagittal is exactly in the middle. The parasagittal is a little bit away from the midline. Then if you have a cut like this, you divide the body into superior and inferior halves. This plane in this orientation is the transverse plane. So the transverse plane gives you superior, inferior, or cranial caudal halves. Then if you see the body from the lateral view, If you have a plane that's passing <coughs> through like this, this is going to divide the body into anterior and posterior two halves. Okay? They call this plane frontal or they also call coronal plane. So what do we need to remember? We need to know the different planes. There are three major planes, sagittal plane. They have mid-sagittal, parasagittal, whether it gives equal or unequal halves. Then you have the transverse plane that gives the superior and inferior halves. And the frontal or coronal plane that gives the anterior and posterior halves. Okay? So that's for the body planes. Okay, the last section, we have two more, but Let's first do the body cavities on page 4. What do you mean by a cavity? Empty yeah, empty space. space. Like, the, like the rib cage as technically you have a physical space, but there are some spaces that are imaginary spaces that surrounds the different organs. So in the front of the body, you call this ventral cavity. The back, starting from the head all the way down up to your hip, we call it what? Dorsal cavity. So the ventral cavity is in the front, the dorsal cavity is in the back. But if you look within the dorsal cavity, you have two subdivisions. One is your cranial cavity, and then you have the vertebral cavity below that. Can you see them? Okay. We need to know what organ is in what cavity. Okay. So the cranial cavity has your brain. What do we have in the vertebral cavity? Spinal cord. Exactly. So what do we have in the dorsal cavity? Both brain and spinal cord. So you have to pay attention to what is being asked. Whether it's asking for dorsal cavity or specifically cranial or vertebral cavity. Similarly, when you come to the ventral side of the body, you have the overall ventral cavity, then you divide where you have the chest, that's your thoracic, 
Then you have the abdominal cavity. Then you have the pelvic cavity for the lung. So the thoracic cavity has your heart and the lung, right? You have a pair of lungs on either side of the heart. Abdominal cavity has your stomach and most of the digestive organs um, and the intestines and so on. The pelvic cavity has your reproductive organs and some of the lower portion of the intestine. Okay? Sometimes they call the abdominal and pelvic cavity together as abdominal pelvic cavity. Okay? Thoracic cavity, it divides again into pericardial and pleural cavity. These are subdivisions. The pericardial cavity is the space around the heart. Can you see that? If you look at the figure at the bottom, you will find that. And then the space around both the lungs, the space around the lung is going to be called your pleural cavity. P-L-E-U-R-A-L, pleural cavity. Okay. So what do we need to know? You need to know the two major cavities, subdivisions of the cavity, what's inside the ventral cavity, what's inside the dorsal cavity, what's inside each specific cavity. Okay. So you need to pay attention to that. You have the description in the book. <coughs> the very last section, um, if you go to the figure in the end, you can use the description on page 5. You see how we have evolved over time. Let's consider atoms. Okay, atoms is the beginning. Okay, so we start from the atoms and build up different levels of complexity up to the organism level. Okay, so the atoms like carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and so on, they combine in different fashion, different ways, uh, due to attraction between those atoms. They form what we call molecules, water, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, okay? And then these molecules combine to form the next higher level. If you see what's the next higher level that follows. After the molecule, what do we have? Macromolecule. Macromolecule, okay? Like carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, nucleic acids, for example. And then the next level will be the tiny compartments we find within a single cell which we call organelles like mitochondria, a nucleus, okay. Then you have cell, that's the next level, next higher level and different <coughs> cells together, the similar cells come together to form tissue like muscular tissue made up of muscle cells, nervous tissue made up of nerve cells and so on, okay. And different tissues together make your organ. There are so many organs, heart, lung, eye, nose, ear, okay? And various organs put together, we have organ system, like digestive system. If you take digestive system, you have the teeth, the tongue, the stomach, the liver, so many organs, but they all work together as one system. We call digestive system, reproductive system circulatory system and so on. And finally, we have us, the organism, like plant, animals, we are humans, so we are all called organisms at that level. So what do we need to know here? Which comes first, chicken or the egg? Okay. Meaning, atoms, molecules, micromolecules, we need to know the different levels starting from the atoms all the way up to the organism. Can we do that? Take five minutes, go through anything that you want to.